Close the door. Hey everyone, uh, how's everyone doing this week? I'm not doing the greatest, I don't feel too well. I think I've got a little bit of a tummy bug, but I'm not gonna like, let that get in the way of us doing some uh, activities. So, this week, following on from last week with Jack, <clears throat> we're gonna do a little bit of playing some of the um, the animal, the sub, uh, the not the sub quack, uh, the animal game that you played last week. We're gonna do a little bit of lap for a warm up, and then we're gonna do a little bit of coordination stuff. So, what we're gonna need is we're gonna need a few balled up socks, maybe like one or two. Uh, you don't need a lot, uh, or if you want to try, you can do some uh, do it with something else, like uh, for example, a little plastic toy if you've got one, um, or. Uh, toilet, uh, like a roll of toilet roll or something like that, just to go with the whole uh, lockdown trend. So, go ahead, grab that stuff for now, come on back. Oh, and just before I forget, make sure you get yourself something to drink. Uh, you want to make sure that you're keeping hydrated throughout this whole thing. Okay, do that and come back. Okay, so now that you're back and you've got yourself something to drink, and you've also got your balled up socks, we're going to move on, we're going to get into the warm up. So, do we remember last week what Jack said the five animals were in the main part of his session? Do we remember? I'll give you a few seconds to try and remember. If you don't remember, then don't worry, I'm going to go over them now. So, number one, if you remember, it will be the crab. So how, how have we done the crab? Was we got down into roughly a squat. I don't feel too good, so I might not do a very good impression of what Jack was doing last week, but I'll try my best. <coughs> so, down into a squat, uh, and crabs move side to side, and they've got their, their claws. So, put your hands up, make claw shapes, and all you're doing is you're moving side to side around the living room or around your, your play space. <coughs> That's number one, that is the crab. Number two was the frog. So what you did is you got down quite low and you put your hands on the ground and you would jump and you would land with your hands and your feet around your place, around your jumping space. That was number two. Number three was the snake. Now, because I don't feel too good, I'm not going to get down on the ground. But um, if you're able to get down on the ground, you would slither along like a snake. Or you can do what I'm going to do. I'm going to move around my space weaving my arms in the in the way a snake would like so number five oh, sorry number five we missed it four number four was the gorilla so you got down to the squat you had your fists and they would go into the ground and you would jump put your fists down and every so often you would go oh, oh, and uh, beat your chest and then jump around again like so, that's the gorilla, so that's number four. Number five was the kangaroo. So you go down, bend your knees again, arms out in front, and you would hop about like a kangaroo. Like so. So that was our five. What I'm going to do is we're going to move around the living room. And when I shout out a number, I want you to imitate the animal. So you've got to try and remember the animal that I said. So remember, one's crab, two's frog. Three, snake, four, gorilla, and five, the kangaroo. Whenever we're ready, we'll get into it. Okay, we all ready? We all set? Cool. So let's start moving around. Don't go around in circles. You want to be moving in different directions. All over the play space that you've got. Make sure you're watching out for TVs or, or sofas. If you're in your class, watch out for everyone that's in your class. And then number one, do we remember what that was? It's the crab. So then into your crab position and you've got your pincers, or well not pincers, your claws, and you're moving around the area like so. 
Number two, what was that? It was a frog down and you're jumping around like a frog. Men make a rude noise. Number three was a snake. So you're weaving your arms in and out like a snake. Number four, do you remember what number four was? Number four was the gorilla. So you're down, fist to the ground, and you're moving about. You might beat your chest. Like so. Number five, the kangaroo. So you're jumping about like a kangaroo. And stop there. Perfect. So, now that we've got an idea for all of the animals, go away, quickly grab a drink of water, come right back, okay? And if you're back now, I'm gonna assume you've already got the drink of water and we're ready to move on. So, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is the same thing again, so you're moving around, <clears throat> but I'm gonna call out the numbers in a random order, it's not gonna go through one, two, three, four, five. It can be one, four, five, two, one, three, so on. <clears throat> and I'll just call out the numbers randomly and you've got to try and remember what animal it is. I'm not going to tell you what animal it is. You guys are going to try and come up with it first and then I'll bring in the animal, okay? So for example, if we're moving around, I might shout two. I'm going to keep moving around, but I expect you guys to be in the, uh, the second animal, which is the frog. So, second animal is frog. I expect you guys to be moving around like a frog before I say, that's the frog, guys, and start hopping about, okay? If I'm already the frog and I'm hopping about, and then I show five, I'm gonna keep hopping like a frog, and then I'll go, remember, guys, number five is the kangaroo, and I'll start jumping about like a kangaroo. We all understand? Brilliant. Okay, so moving around. Move around your play space, all different directions, chop and change. Number three, do we remember what number three is guys? Number three is a snake. So we're moving around, weaving the arms in and out like a snake. Number four, who remembers what number four is? Number four is the gorilla. So you fist down, you're moving around, you might... Ooh, 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 ooh. Make some noises, move around like a gorilla. Number five. Hello. You okay? Okay, so we'll just say, uh, we'll, we'll head back into number five. We're starting off again. So number five uh, is the kangaroo. So into the kangaroo, <clears throat> you're hopping about, arms out in front of you, moving around. Jumping about. Number one. Do you remember what number one is? What was number one? That's the crab. Down into the squat. And we're moving side to side. Around the living room. Around your play space. Number two. What's number two? I'm still number one, so what's number two? Frog. Perfect. So we're jumping about. Ribbit. Like frog. Hands on the ground, defeat on the ground, bounce up and down. And stop there. Perfect guys. Quickly, grab another drink of water if you need, and we'll move on. Okay guys, so now that you're back, I'm assuming you've had a drink or you don't need one. <clears throat> so for the next part, we're done with the warm-up. Should feel your muscles all nice and warmed up. I definitely am warmed up because this room is boiling. So, I'm very sweaty. <clears throat> this next part, you're going to need your socks. Or your toilet roll. Or whatever other item that you're going to use <clears throat> and it has to be completely okay for you to hit the item off your body parts like so without them damaging ornaments that are around the, uh, your room without damaging a TV or such if there was a knock off them <clears throat> needs to be nice and soft and also needs to be soft enough that if you were to hit it off your own head that it's not going to hurt you hence why I'm saying a toilet roll would be okay socks um, and maybe like a plastic ball or something like that, uh, if you've got something like that. Very light plastic ball, like I'm meaning like, uh, like a play pool ball. So, what we're going to do is we only need one at the moment, we're going to chuck the other one to the side. Uh, and what I want us to do is I want us to get used to 
keeping that object in the air. So how we're going to do it is we're going to use the palm of our hand, which is this big bit in the centre of your hand, and all you're going to do is place your object on it, like so, flat hand, throw it up, and as it comes back down onto your hand, you just hit against it to force it back into the air, but don't hit it too hard or it's going to hit the roof and you're not going to be able to control it. <coughs> you want to softly tap it so that you're able to keep it under control. Use one hand, use both hands, <coughs> use your elbows, but keep it simple for now. If you're really good at it, you can use your elbows. If you're really, really good at it, even try and use your head. But if you're not as good at it just yet, then take it slow, use your hands. <clears throat> if you're using a pair of socks like I am, it can have some spin, it can move around in ways that you're not going to expect it. So it might fly off in a random direction like that. Don't do that though. So, if we're ready, all I want you to do is around about 30 seconds to a minute of trying to put it back in the air. If it falls on the floor, just pick it back up and start again. I want to see how many you guys can do. So, I'm going to do it with you guys. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do it. Next 30 seconds to a minute. I'll tell us when to stop, okay? So, on you go. Keep going. Small taps, guys. Only small taps. If you need to move around, you can move around to try and chase it. Like if it moves over there, I've dropped it, so I'm just going to pick it back up and I'm going to start again. And see with this, uh, my sock, it's moving all over the place. So I'm keeping my eyes, tracking it as it moves. So you want to do that as well. Track the item as in, keep an eye on it, keep looking towards where it is. There we are guys, keep going. See how many you can get. If you're getting loads, keep it up. Five, four, three, two, one. And stop there. So drop the sock, catch the sock, whatever it is. <clears throat> Just stop hitting the sock up and down. Sorry, I almost sneezed. So, <clears throat> we've had a little play about with it, we've tried to keep them, uh, the sock up in the air using all the body parts that we need to. <clears throat> this time, I want you to try and keep the, bottom, uh, the sock or whatever it is that you're using in the air with only one hand. So take the other hand and put it behind your back or keep it to the side or make sure you're not going to use it, put it in your pocket if you have to. Maybe not put it in your pocket, that sounds a little bit dangerous, don't do that. Maybe put it behind your back, that way you can use it again. But we're going to try and keep the ball, or whatever it is that you're using, up in the air with one hand. That's it. So, for another 30 seconds, try that out. So let's do it. In three, two, one, go. Bouncing the, the object up and down, one-handed. You might even need to move around a little bit. If it starts moving, you can try and keep up with the item. That's it guys, keep on going. See how many you can get, try not to drop it. Oh, I dropped mine. Here we are, so I'll start again. That's it. Keep going guys, keep going. Oh, I dropped mine again. Last 10 seconds guys. So 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, and I dropped mine at the last second. Stop there, guys. Finish up there. If you need a drink, quickly go grab a drink. Come right back. But if you don't need a drink, we'll move on. <clears throat> so this time, what I want us to do is to take the other hand. So I used my right hand. Hello. This time I'm going to put my right hand behind my back and I'm going to use my left hand, which is the hand that I don't normally use. <clears throat> so, we want to make sure we're doing it on both hands. So, same thing again, we're just going to get into it, keeping the, the item up, but only with your left hand or the opposite hand to what you were using the last time. So, if you use your left hand the last time, then use your right hand. If you use your right hand, use your left hand. We understand? Perfect. Let's get going in three... 
two, one, and go for it. So this one might be a little bit more tricky because it's a hand you don't normally use. <coughs> so keep going. No matter how hard it is, just pick it back up and keep trying it again and again and again. No matter how many times you might drop it. I'm really struggling on this hand. It goes up there and there it goes. So I've dropped it, but I just pick it back up right away and set myself off again. Oh, there we are. Remember, only using one hand. We're not using any other body parts at this point. Woo. There we are. Oh, this one's going up at the place. Last 10 seconds, guys. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And stop there. Perfect. Well done, guys. It's a lot harder sometimes when you're using the other hand, the hand that you don't often use. So I really struggled on that one. I imagine some of you also struggled on that one. There's some people though that are just really good on both hands. So well done to whoever that is. <clears throat> and well done to everybody for trying it. So we're gonna try something else this time. What I want us to do is now we've got full range of both hands. We can use both hands to do anything we need to, but I want us to move around your space. So if you've got a small living room, just moving around in the living room, <coughs> minding not to bump into anything. If you're at school, don't be tri make sure you're looking out for everyone around you and not bumping into any of your classmates, okay? Let's give it a try. So you're just bouncing the object around whilst you move around. And make sure you're always looking around you to make sure that you're not bumping into anything. We all clear? Understanding perfectly? Okay, we'll try that for a 30 second spell as well. So let's go for it. In three, two, one, and start. So moving around. Oh, I've dropped it already. Move around, guys. That's it. Try not to go in a circle, as we'll quite often do. If we're trying something that's a little bit harder, try not to circle, go in different directions, even maybe go backwards if you can. Remember, be careful where you are, not to bump into anybody. <clears throat> Keep going guys, you're doing great. Keep moving. Stay, going side to side as well if you can. Going in different directions at random times to keep yourself on your toes. Oh, I dropped again. <clears throat> Last 15 seconds guys, keep going. Dropped again. This one's a little bit harder. Oh. Last 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop there guys. Well done. It was really hard actually to move around and to also hit the object up and down. If you need, go get a drink, or you can just stay with me and we'll move on. Okay, so for this little next part, what we're gonna need <clears throat> is just this one sock again, but we're gonna introduce other body parts. So when you're hitting the, hitting the object around, if you want, include your knees, include the shoulders, include your head, if you can get it high enough that is. So include your head. Oh, oh I saved it. I want you to come up with as many parts of the body that you can use, even as awkward as a hip, anything you can do. I want to see you guys doing it. Obviously, I can't see you, but show your parents, show your teachers, show everybody. I want them to be able to see that you are doing something interesting. So, on you go. I'm going to do it with you. We're going to try and use our head, use the knees, use the feet, try and do some keepy ups of some sort. <coughs> For all the football guys, that, uh, that, or the football girls even, uh, that are really good with your feet, try using your feet. Anyone that plays netball or basketball, you might have a good uh, try of some different positions that your hand can be in. Go wild, try anything you can. Even go for a little spin and try and catch it again. So, in three, we're gonna head off. So three, two, one, go for it. 
see if you can use different parts of the body to move the object around. Oh, I'm struggling a wee bit here. Oh, here we. Oh, almost had, but almost had three there. So different parts. Ah, oh, almost of the body. But just like what I've done there. Don't try and kick it too hard because you might kick it into someday or something. You don't want to do that. So if you're going to kick it, make sure it's a light kick so that it just comes up about your hip levels. So not too hard. Oh, almost. That's it, guys. Keep going. Another 30 seconds or so. Whoa, no. Almost had it. Close. That's it guys, keep going. Oh, that's a way. <laughs> Maybe even use fingertips instead of the palm of your hand. Just whatever you can come up with. That's a way. <clears throat> and see what you can come up with. Oh, almost. Ah, come on. And ten, nine, eight, seven, six, ah, five, four, three, two, one. Stop there, guys. So that's us finished uh, the main event. If you want to go ahead. And you can keep doing this for a little bit longer, or you can go back and try some different things. If you find that easy, you can also add in a second pair <coughs> of socks and maybe bounce that one up. Try doing a little bit of juggling. It's a little bit harder, that one, but if you feel up to it, see how many times you can bounce two socks at once. I really can't do it. I'm really bad at it, but it is something for you to try. So, if you start continuing on, no problem, grab a drink of water and then find a space on the floor for us to do the cool down. Okay guys, so, <clears throat> what did we do today? We done the animal game at the very beginning of the session. Same one the Jack done last week. <clears throat> there was the five different animals. We had the uh, crab, who got done. We had the frog. We had the, oh, what was this one? Anyone remember what this one is? The snake. Then we had the ooh, 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 gorilla. And then the final one was the kangaroo. Fantastic. So, after that, we then went on to playing a bit with socks um, and hitting them in the, in the air. What do you think we were trying to accomplish doing that? Well, what were the sort of things we were learning? We were learning to do some coordination with our hands. So a lot of hand-eye hand -eye coordination, that's what it means. So your hand and your eye were working together to bend something in the air. We then done some other body parts, so you were getting some foot eye, some knee eye, some different uh, different areas of the body were working together to try and keep the, th the object in the air. And then finally, I gave you a little uh, a little test to see if you can do multiple at the same time, but we've only done that a little, little, little bit, just a little idea. So finally, we're going to do our cool down, and I like, I like the cool downs, it helps us to feel less sore at the end of the week and again my socks are filthy yeah, but it helps us to feel a little bit less sore when it comes to the next day so bring leg in and whistle <laughs> no so all you're doing put your hand on the top of your thigh and you're just letting your hand go to the bottom of your your shin or wherever it is that you can reach to i can typically reach to my toes and you want to keep this muscle nice and relaxed this one's a little bit uh, harder to do um, than some other ones. 
uh, but it's a very good stretch. And then the other one as well. Same thing again, foot to your thigh, and you just run your hand down until you feel a little bit of a stretch in the back of your hamstring. I can get to my foot, but I've been doing it for a little while. You guys might even get to the back of your heel or something like that. You guys are normally a little bit more flexible than I am. Next one, feet together. This one is the butterfly, I believe it's called. Um, and what you're trying to do, one of two things, knees, ground, chest, feet. If you can do one, try and do the other at the same time. I normally put my hands on my feet, elbows on my knees, and try and push them to the ground. This is about as far as I can get. I'm not very stretched here, this department. And you should feel a stretch on this part of your body, round about the inner thigh. Ooh, that's a, that is a stretch. Hmm. I normally hold it for about five seconds or so. Give or take a second. Next up, we're going to do some upper body stuff. So, lie on the front, you take one hand and you slide it to the side. You take the other hand and slide it the opposite way. But have a bend in this arm and not one in this arm. And you're going to sleep. And you should feel a little bit of a stretch in the shoulder. If your arm starts to go funny feeling, you can move it a bit further up towards you guys or away from you. And then, again, you're just going to sleep. Only hold that for a couple of seconds, because this one can make your arm go a little bit funny. And then we do the same on the other side. Whoop, whoop, fall asleep. We're done. Oh, oh, die. Oh. And then, if we just sit up again, take one hand, put it behind your head, take the other hand, put it on the, on the elbow, and see how far you can get this hand down your back. But don't push it too far because you could overstretch or hurt yourself. So, same on the other side, hold it for a couple of seconds. Perfect. Okay, guys, so hopefully you've enjoyed that this week. I know I enjoyed it. And next week you're going to have whoa, Megan I believe and uh, she'll probably do something a bit similar to, uh, to what we've done today. So thanks for coming guys and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye bye.